Welcome to entering any irregular scheduling information into the Google Calendar. Both part-time and full-time staff have regular schedules that Laura and Jenny know about, but sometimes we'd like to modify our schedules with vacation days, float days, meetings, and other irregularities. In the past, we've used a variety of different methods to communicate this to our schedulers. Email, paper calendars, and miscommunications. When RA worked at RA and reference worked at reference, that seemed to be fine, but there's been a lot of confusion lately and we needed to find a central location to store our information. The first step to using Google is to sign in. To find the calendar, go to the main Google page and click on More. Scroll down to Calendar, click on that, and then sign in. Our sign in for this account is EPL Adult Services. So we don't receive any pranks or, or spam, I will post our password in a different place. Click on sign in once you've entered the information. As you can see, the default view is a weekly view. You can even customize your view on the side by highlighting only specific date ranges. You mostly won't have to do that though and we'll concentrate on using other views. For our purposes, we will be using the month view. These, are, these little options are located at the upper right hand side of the screen. I'm going to click on month view and I'm going to move the screen over a little bit so we can see a nice screenshot here of various events. I think most of us will encounter two different types of scheduling conflicts. Something that affects the whole day, like a vacation or a float day, and something that affects a partial day, such as a meeting or outside event. I'll demonstrate how to enter a whole day event first. Let's say you'd requested a vacation day or a float day on February 9th. We're going to change this calendar view to February and I will click on February 9th in the calendar. As soon as you do that, a box will pop up and you can just enter the information. I'm going to enter JLS Vacation and click on Create Event. As you can see, I have just added that event to the calendar. Let's say I accidentally added it to the wrong day. I can click on it, drag, and drop it to the correct day. I'm going to move back this vacation day to the 9th and I want to talk a little bit about what to do when you fill out your paper time off requests. As soon as you actually fill in your time off request, please add the event to the scheduling conflicts calendar. You can always remove it if necessary. For example, I can click on the event and just click delete. Just a reminder that if you do add a vacation or float day ahead of time, you won't even have to email the schedulers to let them know. The only reason why you would have to do that is if it happened when the schedule was already made and you would have to let Leslie and the schedulers know through email. Now let's add some programs or partial day events to the calendar. 
Let's say that I have a program on Tuesday, February 8th, from 11 to 12. Well, first of all, it shows that I'm unavailable, so let's get rid of this for a second. We'll delete that. So I need some time off the desk to set up the program and take it down. So to do that, I'm going to click on February 8th in the calendar. And my program is from 11 to 12, but I will be off the desk for a little bit beyond that. So I'm just going to type in JLS unavailable 10.30 to 12.30. Then I'm going to click on Edit Event Details. The cool thing about Google is you can add a description in the event here. JLS computer program in training room 11 to 12. But I actually need the setup time. I'm just going to click on save and then the schedulers will know when they print out the agenda view, I will be unavailable to work the desk at that time. Another weird scheduling occurrence that comes up is when somebody is working a different shift than normal. In the past, we've written something like JLS working 12 to 8, but with the scheduling conflicts calendar, we will be recording what we will not be available to work. Let me enter in an example for you. To make it even crazier, this event repeats every third week of the month. Every third Wednesday of the month, I have a program in the evening at District 65. This means that instead of working 8.30 to 5, I work from 11.30 until 8 p.m. and I'm also out of the building for part of the day. I'll add this repeating event to the calendar like this. First, click on the day or the date the event is going to occur. This will start on the 16th, the third Wednesday of the month. I'm going to type in JLS unavailable uh -oh. unavailable 8.30 to 11.30 because I won't be in the building. I'm going to click on Edit Event Details and now I can set this up as a repeating event. I'm going to click on Repeat and it actually repeats monthly. So I'm going to click monthly and then you have a lot of different options. So I'm going to say it repeats monthly and then Google figures out, oh, it repeats monthly on the third Wednesday of every month. I'm going to click on done and to check myself, I can look over here and yep, that's correct. Now I'm going to add a description in the description field. Well, I'm unavailable because I will be working 11.30 until 8 p.m. That just lets the schedulers know what's going on. I can save this and you can see that my event is listed on the February calendar and on the March calendar and beyond. I'm going to go back to the February calendar because I also need to record the fact that I will be out of the building and off the desk in the evening. So now I'm going to click on the event on the 16th again, or actually to add a new event, and I'm going to type in the times when I'm going to be unavailable to work the desk. So I'm going to be unavailable 5.30 until 8 p.m. And 
I guess I should put in my initials so they know who is unavailable. I'll click on Edit Event Details again. I also want to make this a repeating event. I'm going to repeat monthly, every month on that Wednesday, monthly on the third Wednesday, click on Done. This is correct here. And now I'll add a description. And I think I'll say, okay, JLS on now at District 65 Family Night. And then click on Save. You can see that my event actually didn't enter in correctly because I didn't type it in correctly. So I'm going to click on it again and I'm going to edit the event details. Let me pull my screen over so you can see. And it should say JLS unavailable. Okay, save that again. Would you like to change only this event? Here, let me move this so you can see the screen. Would you like to change only this event, all events in the series, or this in all future events in the series? Well, I would like to change all the events in this series. Now, when we go back to the calendar, it is correct, and I'm going to check March and April, and look, it seems to be working. Go back again to February. To sign out of Google Calendar, just click the Sign Out button, and then you're set. You've just learned how to add events to the Scheduling Conflicts calendar. Google is designed to be pretty intuitive, but if you do have any questions, let us We hope that instead of this, scheduling will be now a little more like this. Thanks again for watching and have a good day.